If you've been watching content on Hades 2, you probably don't need me to tell you that Aspect of Pan is super, super powerful. And it's also really beginner friendly because it works quite similarly to Aspect of Chiron for the bow from the original Hades game, where you drop your cast and use that to essentially mark enemies, then fire off your special, the daggers seek the enemies within your cast. But not all OP builds are made equal. And so today I'm going to be talking about a version that I find to be the most fun. In fact, I had so much fun with the setup that I played two different versions because I wasn't quite happy with the outcome the first time. In short, the first time I picked up Spiral Knives, which felt a little bit finicky. I had to super carefully point blank enemies and I had the cast from Hera, which yes, it makes her cast last longer, but unfortunately that also means that you have to spend more time waiting for enemies to go into your cast rather than repositioning it on the enemies. And so while that run was super good and crushed Fear 16, I ended up going with something else. Here's a quick look at what I settled on, then I'll go through the run explaining my choices as I made them, because sometimes it's just as important to elaborate on the process as it is to showcase the end results. And so if you like seeing Hades 2 builds, do be sure to get subscribed, leave a like while you're down there, and for now, let's begin with a build. Well, this build was absolutely absurd, that was definitely my easiest Kronos yet. So what's the core of a build? Luckily, because I played through it twice in a row, I can speak on that with a lot more precision than some of the other builds I've played so far. First up, Wave Flourish, because having flat damage is good. And I got it to level 6 this time, which is 64 splash damage. You know, the thing that does a massive amount of damage when it's attached to your special, because every single knife ends up being its own splash. That's pretty cool. In addition, I really like Arctic Ring. I'd say that's the second most important thing here, because Arctic Ring CCs enemies. In the first run that I did with Hera, it felt really greedy, clunky to reposition my cast, and enemies were getting to hit me a lot. When I freeze them with Arctic Ring, they don't get to hit me. Sure, Kronos got to hit me a little bit here and there, you know, my top damage taken was, as always, from Kronos, because I'm not the best at avoiding everything on the fight, but also it's about half of what I take on average, so hey, I think that's a pretty big win. Oh, and my damage was just taking massive chunks off. He lost a bunch of a start, because I had Knuckle Bones plus Hades, you know, good old, just take the first third off a fight, but even in the second phase, I only had to cast a few times and he was going down without an issue. Then last up, Hook Knives, which certainly didn't feel necessary, but did make things feel a lot better. That's pretty much everything that I put together, and yeah, Aspect of Pan is really, really good. Coming over to a couple other boons that I had, which I found to be useful, uh, I was trying things like Tranquil Gain. Honestly, Poseidon's for the little bubbles, way better. Tranquil Gain was not very good, but I hadn't found Poseidon's, and I was in Tartarus, and I got offered it, and I said, you know what? It's better than nothing. Sure enough, it was better than nothing. This is only really important, though, if you have the fear modifier that drains all of your magic at the start of a fight. Otherwise, things aren't going to live long enough for you to need magic recovery. Now, I had Supernova. Again, not required. You don't you need Apollo at all, but it feels really good to have your cast expand in size. That way, more enemies are within the cast. Popper Soul, not required, but, you know, nearly four centaur hearts for free. Pretty darn good. Then we had the Concentrated Flurry, which felt really good. It was certainly nice for nuking down targets. I much prefer this over the Spiral version. While having 16 blades sounds super tempting, firing the blades in every direction is not all that it cracked up to be. That was my biggest regret about the previous run with a Hera boon. Not only was it very clunky for me to drop the Hera cast, but also it was really clunky to have to point blank stuff because the knives would be firing away from my character and therefore away from the enemy. And each knife still has a limited lifespan. If you start over here and you fire knives off this way, they'll actually run out of lifespan before they loop around and hit the enemies. So going with hook knives, great. Going with anything that enhances your special, gives you channel time bonuses, all that fun stuff. Really, really good as well. But I wouldn't actually go for the spiral because as nice as 16 knives sounds, I mean, you've already got plus three from Pan, plus five if you rank it up all the way to five. You don't really need the extra blades. What you need is your blades dealing extra damage. Now for my Arcana, pretty standard setup, plus the Unseen. I really need to upgrade this because three magic per second, not great. It takes eight seconds to fully charge my cast if I have no other magic recovery. That's why I ended up taking the boon from Demeter. Again, the Poseidon boon that creates the little bubbles when you hit stuff, way better, absolutely advised. Then for Vaz, Foes have 30% health, not that it mattered, they got one shot anyway from a single volley. 60% foes, you know, the more things to splash damage. Vav Haunting, just run over the green circles. Vav Wandering, if you can fight the enemies in the next region, you can fight them in this region. Vav Arrogance, basically just get a little bit of extra magic or don't click too many high rarity boons that you don't need. 
and Vow of Panic where you enter with zero magic. This one was a little annoying, and I did have to wait a couple seconds off the start to get enough magic to start volleying things. It certainly slowed down my clear. That said, my clear time was 38 minutes, and this was Fear 16, which I consider to be quite fast. Also, the Kronos was super easy. I popped one Death Defy. That meant that I had well over 500 health left before I would have actually died for real. So because this is technically a restart run where I did it, went through the whole thing, recorded the whole thing, and then restarted because I wasn't that happy with a final build, I don't actually have Erebus here. But honestly, Erebus wasn't too eventful anyway. The only notable things were getting my Poseidon boon right off the start, which makes sense because, well, it was a restart, so I was guaranteed it, I just had to rarify the boon. And then about halfway through, encountering a Hammer of Daedalus and getting my hook knives. So pretty much replicating the success of my previous run. And then I took both of those into the Hakati fight and had absolutely no issues at all. It was as simple as dropping my cast on her, waiting for that to do damage, tick her down, getting a little bit of magic, charging up a special, spamming the special, and continuing until she was defeated. While a fully charged Omega special was definitely going to take off a large chunk of her health bar, I didn't really feel the need to do it too, too much. At this point, just regular specials were fine because, in comparison to the later bosses, Hikari doesn't have all that much health. Also, if you're playing Aspect of Pan, it's kind of a do infinite damage build. So, most of your focus should be on other things like utility, magic, quality of life, channel speed, all that fun stuff, some of which I ended up getting for this run and some of which I didn't. All right, so as a fun experiment, I did grab the Daedalus Temporary Hammer as my keepsake. No real reason, I just wanted to try it because I haven't used it much. It didn't end up being impactful in any way. But I did this because my build already felt strong. It already felt good, and it already felt like it had the tools I needed to deal with everything, which I had no problem doing. And as I kept clearing, I got a great boon from Chaos. Like I said at the top, the build already has astronomical damage. You don't need more damage. You need defenses and life. So getting offered a plus 94 life boon from Chaos is great. It's going to cost me a bit of gold, but that's basically four centaur hearts, which if I'm going to buy them for 100 gold each, means I'm saving 400 gold. No, so I'd have to get offered them. Or maybe I just buy them anyway and get even more life by the end. Uh, spoiler alert, that's exactly what I did. So as I was clearing, it's drop cast, special, or drop cast, omega special. Simply doing a knife toss interrupts most enemies and deals with them no problem, but for larger groups, or particularly tanky armored foes, I definitely wanted the omega. And my god, I did not expect the cast from Demeter to be doing as much work as it is. Especially with the plus 60% enemies from the fear modifier, this was completely destroying everything, and I barely noticed the modifier. I didn't get overwhelmed, I didn't feel like things were swarming me, largely as a result of doing this. And as I kept clearing, I ended up picking up the time slow hex. I keep wanting to call it a call, because that's what it was in Hades 1, and you know, sometimes changing the names of things is very confusing. But no, it is a hex. I picked it up. Personally, I ended up really liking it, and I do enjoy it a lot on channel builds, as it gives me extra safety while I'm channeling up and dealing with foes. That said, there is no specific hex that is mandatory for this build. In general, Fountain Healing, Time Slow, Polymorph, all really good options. Jump up and down, big damage blast after delay. Whichever of those you get that have the most path points, usually what I end up taking. Though sometimes I don't go with a polymorph, especially if I'm more worried about bosses and have a lot of CC to deal with trash. So I kept going, kept fighting enemies, and kept having great success. There were a couple times where I underestimated enemies and did take a little bit of damage. But surprisingly, even though I had about 107 max life, I didn't end up getting that low. In fact, I was high enough that I was confident I'd be able to heal to full after interacting with a fountain and defeating the sirens. For example, look at how well the build deals with this absolute mess of a room. In fact, you could say the build completely destroys it. Freezing enemies so they don't get to act is a very powerful modifier. And because a lot of my damage gear is coming from the splash off of my Poseidon boon, which is an AoE, the closer enemies are standing to each other, the better. The more damage I do because they're standing near their friends. Oh, and I'm pretty sure on the backstabs and return strikes, that definitely helps when there's additional things for the knife to fly through on its return journey. So in short, I cleared all this, I cleared the sirens no problem, and it was onto the Fields of Sorrow with zero issues in sight. It was in the Fields of Sorrow that I learned, above and beyond anything else, that having a freeze was absolutely the best cast for this build. Because even in a fight with multiple tough enemies, things like the wolves that I know better than to approach them, I somehow always approach them and take damage from them. I was freezing them, charging up an Omega, and absolutely blasting them. 
I did find a second hammer upgrade, fought my way through enemies, froze them solid without issue, and ended up with concentrated flurry. I was really hoping for the 66% reduced channel here, because it would have been very nice to channel up much faster, get out all those knives as quickly as possible. At this point, the damage was fine. It was all about how can I minimize my channels, but I didn't hit it. And so I decided that, you know what? A little bit of extra damage on my special doesn't hurt and it doesn't increase the costs or otherwise negatively impact my build. But at this point, I already had 48 flat, which ends up scaling to over 60 by the time I finished Tartarus for every knife from a Poseidon boon. So I wasn't too, too worried about it. On paper, all of this was lower DPS than the 16 knife version that I'd been playing the run before. In practice, because I didn't have to point blank enemies and I could charge up and fire my knives directionally, it was much, much higher damage. And so I went into Cerberus with a lot of confidence, maybe a little bit too much confidence because I then completely mistimed everything, which ultimately didn't matter too much because I was able to safely go around, negate most of Cerberus's attacks, deal buttloads of damage and free the doggo. Someday I'll be able to pet him, I have not been able to do that yet, and I really hope it's actually possible, and Supergiant isn't just teasing us. But until then, I will continue to free Cerberus, kind of like giving him a bath, you know, he's a little bit grumpy about it, but it is good for him, get all that sorrow and malevolence out so he can return to Hades' side. And also, just as one other note about the Cerberus fight, it was really nice to see those 1700 damage bonuses. Now, throughout Tartarus, I wasn't really going to look for upgrades, which also meant I wasn't really going to look for boons. If anything, it was just Palm of Power to try to get that level up as much as possible on my splash damage. Maybe also combine that with Fluid Gain from Poseidon. Fluid Gain creates these little orbs that restore your magic when you hit enemies, and if you hit enemies with a Flurry of Blades, it turns out you get a Flurry of Orbs, resulting in infinite magic. That's one thing that I really, really like on this build. But unfortunately, I was not able to find, despite ultimately getting a couple more Poseidon boons as I cleared through Tartarus. Now, when I go for a more single target focused version of Aspect of Pan, something on, let's just say Aphrodite, this is where I struggle. Because there's lots of rats, there's lots of skulls, there's lots of hourglasses. With 60% more enemies, that would get to be hugely problematic. Instead, I absolutely breezed through. But I can't really blame the Poseidon AoE for everything. In fact, a big part of it wasn't just the AoE, but it was the fact that I could freeze enemies and I had enough burst damage to either completely remove their armor or kill them outright before they ended up taking even a first step. So being able to do that, really, really, really good. Remember, that is the combo of number one, the aspect of Poseidon for the AoE, and two, the aspect of Demeter on my cast to freeze everything solid. I'd very much recommend targeting these two gods with your keepsakes in the first and second area. You will thank me later. My third god was Apollo, who turned out to be very convenient for extra cast AoE, but extra cast AoE, while certainly nice in the background, wasn't actually very important. It never felt like, oh, this is the difference between me succeeding and failing. So if you happen to get Apollo, cool, but don't restart or anything to get the perfect trifecta of Demeter, Poseidon, and Apollo. Just Demeter and Poseidon, you're good. After that, any other god or goddess on top is gravy. Then I very quickly got to the Kronos fight, and oh man. This was a really easy Kronos fight. I mean, as usual, he was a little bit of a pain, especially since I'm a channel build and I didn't have the faster channeling. So I took a few hits, you know, while being greedy, while trying to get into extra damage that I absolutely shouldn't have worried about. But for the most part, his first phase went down very quickly. This is because I had the knuckle bones and a boon from Hades. What this does is it takes off 15 and 20% of his health. So having him lose a massive chunk of health right from the start makes the first phase much, much easier. And honestly, this could just be me, but I always tend to find that the first phase is actually a little bit harder than the second phase. Probably because the first phase is about your timing and your ability to dodge, and I am so darn bad at dodging his scythe. It just, because it comes a little behind into the side, I will dodge into it nine times out of ten, and one of these days I'll learn. But not today, because yes, I still dodged into it, making this one of a nine rather than one of a one. Now, while I did find this fight to be quite easy, it wasn't necessarily fast. And I think that's because as a channel build, you don't have as many opportunities to get damage on Kronos. He just likes to run away, put himself in an annoying shield bubble that destroys your projectiles, or otherwise use super powerful attacks that are dangerous and are going to chunk your health. And I was feeling confident enough here that I did end up tanking probably more than I should have, popping one of my death defies. Then again, I had three total, and with the amount of base health that I had, each one was going to give me 150, so I was nowhere near dying. And because I felt much more confident with his second phase as opposed to his first, I was like, you know what? Right now, I'll just blast through, I'll brute force it, it's totally fine. 
I'll lose a little health here and there, as long as I don't get absolutely shredded and blow all three defies or something dumb like that. It's not a problem, I can always make it up just by positioning carefully and dealing with him that way. Which is exactly what I was about to do, now that I'd phased the fight into phase two. Once I got him into the second phase, things got much, much easier. Again, I was able to control my positioning, wait for some of his longer attacks, drop my cast on him, move back to a safe distance, charge up a special. A couple times the special didn't end up doing anything because he was slightly too far away, but I never felt like damage was going to be an issue. As long as I continued to dodge his targeted moves, then chunk him using my Omega special. I didn't measure it or anything, but I'd like to say it was 10 or 15% with each Omega special that he took the full blast from. Right now, it feels to me like Aspect of Pan is one of, if not the strongest aspects in the game and possibly one that's strong enough that could see some balance adjustments in the future. Though for now, Supergiant has said we're going to focus on other things and not do balance changes. We're still gathering information. But this build carried me to my first Fear 16 victory, and I wouldn't be entirely surprised if this is what I end up beating Fear 32 on as well. I remember having a similar experience with Aspect of Beowulf in the original Hades, where it was both my first 16 and 32 clear because of the safety and damage it provided. If you want to see a couple of my other builds, then check out my Aspect of Melanoi on the Sister Blades or my Aspect of Momus on Descure of a Staff. Both of those went quite well. Well, okay, the Sister Blades almost fell apart at the end, but I did end up getting Kronos down there too. Links to those will be up in the card and down below. Now, before I go, a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for the continued support. For as those $1 a month, you can make videos just like this one possible. Link to support is also down below. And of course, thanks to everyone who watched to the end. I'm glad you enjoyed this build video. If you found something really cool, be sure to share it down below and I'll see you in the next one.